What's up? Good morning, everybody. This is Gail Dudley with your news in motion. How are you doing? How are you doing this morning? Today is Thursday. We are exactly, good morning, Pastor Alex, five days away. Five days. We've been doing this, holding down the fort for a long haul. And we are seeing the end of the tunnel. Good morning, Kim Kills. Good morning, Marion Jackson. Good morning, people. Good morning. Good morning. It is a cold day in Columbus, Ohio. Um, when I say cold, it is cold. I think it's like 40 degrees. Um, but hey, I live in Ohio. What do you expect, right? So, Kim Kills, what's the temperatures like in North Carolina? Good morning to my brother, Lewis Park. Good morning, Ladybug. Good morning, Deborah. Good morning. I'm missing some people. Yep, I see Deborah, Ladybug. Okay, good morning. Kim Kills, what's the temperature in North Carolina? Pastor Alex, what's the temperature in Baltimore? Good morning. I'm seeing some of you come in here. Good morning. Um, <laughs> did Kim, Kim Kills, 80 degrees. Are you serious? Oh, my word. Good morning, Annette Jackson. Good morning. So 80 degrees in North Carolina. Uh, what is it like in um, Baltimore, Pastor Alex? Good morning, Adrian. Good morning. Good morning, Stephanie. Good morning, Latrice. Um, you're working the polls tomorrow, so I will miss you tomorrow. Hey, work the polls. Work the polls. Work the polls. You can always hit the replay if you're interested. Uh, Davia, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. All right, y'all, so let's get started. We have a lot of news. We have a lot of news. Y'all, everybody just get 55 in Baltimore. Okay, so just about 15 degrees more than what we have going on here. Good morning, Antoinette. Good morning, Oscar. Good morning, y'all. All right, y'all, get ready to celebrate 75 million. Good morning, Beverly. 75 million people have cast their ballot. Can you, can you imagine that, y'all? 75 million, 75 million. Actually, the words are more than 75 million. So we are, we are on our way, y'all. AP is reporting um, that 2020 and the difficulty that we have faced compound with the fear of the virus, confusion over mail-in ballots. I know there's a lot of confusion on that. Um, the anxiety over the bitter divisions in the country, um, early voting has surged uh, dramatically. Advocates have been mobilizing. Um, that includes all of you who are watching News in Motion. Um, volunteers are knocking on doors. They're writing letters. They're doing social media. They're doing so much. So thank you to all of you. We are part of this entire nation um, advocacy that we're doing in the mobilizing. So. Congratulations, kudos, keep going. I pray your strength, your anointing, just continue to do what you're doing. We cannot let up now. I know we're all exhausted, but we cannot let up now. We can't do it now. All right, y'all, double-minded, can we say double-minded? The New York Times is reporting that the Supreme Court allow, allowed longer absentee ballot deadlines in North Carolina uh, like a similar ruling in Pennsylvania, which is another battleground state. Well, they didn't do it for Wisconsin. So either you have one rule or, or multiple rules. And why is everything going to the Supreme Court? Why is everything being bypassed from the, the local courts or the, states, uh, sub, the state Supreme Courts and it's going to the higher courts? What is really happening around this? And then why, in this case, did the Supreme Court uh, um, ruled differently with North Carolina and Pennsylvania than they did with Wisconsin. Hmm, it's interesting. All right, y'all, outstanding ballots, outstanding ballots. Millions, millions, with an S, of mail-in ballots have yet to be returned in the, in the key battleground states just days before the election. Some are blaming the post office. Some are saying we don't know where they are. If you are still holding on to yours, Take it, physically take it to either the, the drop box or take it into the board of elections. Please, at this point, 
do not mail them in at this point. Do not. Please do not do that. Although a judge has once again ordered the United States Postal Service, uh, DeJoy, to, he's like, we're not playing with you. Where are the ballots and get them delivered? Get them delivered. So y'all, we don't know what's about to happen with this at all. Good morning, Rod Davis. All right, y'all, non-voters. Y'all, 538 is reporting this on non-voters. Voter turnout in 2020 election, they've already can see, because we have more than 75 million, um, will be big. Um, there's at least 145 million Americans out of 240 eligible voters. Don't miss those numbers. 145 million Americans out of 240 voters. This, again, is coming from 538. Um, I believe it's 530. You have to spell out the words dot com or dot org. I'm sorry. Um, set to count ballots. But what about the non-voters? Well, compared with voters, um, they're more likely, listen to the statistics here uh, from the research, to have lower incomes, be young, uh, have lower levels of education, and to say they don't belong to either party. Uh, 538 continues to do some research. They also found that they are disproportionately Asian American or Latino. Um, the question is, why don't they vote? Some say they miss their state's uh, registration deadlines. Others say they can't even get off of work or find their polling place. Um, and y'all remember when I did a piece about um, being a cynical voter, um, they said they're more likely to be cynical also about politics. So y'all, our work doesn't stop come November the 3rd, we have to continue. So I'm already writing content on how we continue bringing in the news headlines so that we can continue this conversation. Because y'all, after this election, I think it's like, I believe you can start, and don't quote me on this, I believe you can start somewhere around the 10th or the 11th, if things are good, if things are good with this election and it's over, I think uh, voter registration will open up once again. So. We need to, I know, we're, I know you're tired of me talking about it, but y'all, that's, 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 that's 145 million out of 240. We have a lot of work to do to get people registered to vote. And then you have to think about those who will be turning 18 the following year. So that number is going to increase. So our work does not end after this. So I just want to plant that seed as we're continuing to go. All right, all right y'all, 50 cents has backtracked. And I don't know about y'all, but we haven't heard anything from Kanye West. But guess what about Ice Cube? It has been revealed that he blew off a Zoom call with Senator Kamala Harris and other entertainers saying he wanted a one-on-one -on -one conversation. He ain't want no Zoom call. So there's that. Money, 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 y'all. The uh, Senate and the House of Representatives will add up to $14 billion that they have spent more, more than double of four years ago. All right, y'all, no stimulus package. They left. Um, coronavirus numbers, 9,119,719 confirmed cases. Deaths, 233,130. Recovered, 5,932,840 recovered. Remember, I go to the World Health Organization. All right, y'all, Monday I talked about vote tripling. Uh, Tuesday, I talked about transportation. Yesterday, I talked about voting rights. Today, I want to talk about ID. ID. Know your state's voter ID if you're going to early vote in person or go on the day of election. You do need ID. Military ID, utility bill, bank statement, government check, paycheck, other government documents. All of that, y'all. Know what it is you're going to use and do it. Um, tomorrow, I'm going to go over the whole disability piece, what to look for. And that's going to take about 15 minutes. But there's a whole lot of information to talk to you about disability when it comes to voting, what you can and cannot do. Also, the requesting the Braille cards. I'm going to talk about all of that. So even if this does not pertain to you, it will pertain to somebody you know. Information that we all need to get our hands on and information that you do not normally hear people talk about. So I'm specifically using tomorrow to go through all of that information because I believe it is needed. Um, let me, there was one more thing I wanted to talk about. Um, with the coronavirus numbers, um, Germany and 
There's one more. But was, I believe it was Germany. They are back, Germany and France. They're seeing an increase, but they know how to lead. They're already beginning to shut things down. They're already, already beginning to do curfew. So they're doing things differently. And I think we can take a page from that of, um, when it comes to Americans. All right, y'all. Um, we talked about a oh, stimulus package. Again, food insecure. Um, there are millions upon millions. So again, I just want to do a personal plea that as you go grocery shopping, get extra and take it to your local food bank or to your church, wherever you know people are passing out food. There are people who are hungry. There are people who are now being evicted. Um, we quite possibly will. Tell me more, Mike. Tell me more, Mike Nicholson. We might, we, uh, tell me more, Mike Nicholson, please. Um, please, 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 please make sure you're doing all you can to help your neighbor, to help your neighbor as yourself. Please, 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 y'all. We have to do that. Um, people are become, be, being evicted. They're becoming homeless and they're losing their health insurance. Yeah, Germany. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. Thank you for that. Um, follow their lead. We need to, we really need to follow their lead. So y'all, I, I want to talk again tomorrow. So if you know anybody who wants, and there is so much information on voting as someone who is disabled, I want to take my time and walk through that tomorrow. I will give a few headlines tomorrow. Of course, I'm going to give you the number of how many people have voted, but I really want us to take our time and walk through the whole disability piece. It is there's a lot. There's the visually impaired. There are those who are um, disabled in wheelchairs. Um, there's so much information. I will need about 15 minutes to go over all of that information with you tomorrow. It's information, if you pay attention, you haven't heard a lot of. Um, so I'm wondering if that's where some of these people are. So I want to go back to this before we wrap up, because y'all, this number is huge. This number is huge. Um, if I can get back to it, um, we have 35, at least 35, this is AP reporting, we have at least 35 million mail ballots, which has already been returned. 35 million ballots that have already been returned. Um, so again, if you take that ballot, we talked a little bit about this yesterday. If you take that ballot in and say, okay, this is returned. I'm turning this in. Give me another ballot. They have to give you that ballot. They have to give you another ballot. But understand, it may be a provisional ballot. Nope, you're right. I'm not loving provisional ballots, but at least you will get to complete a provisional ballot. Also, find out why. Find out why it was returned. Get a clear understanding as to what was happening. So to give you a little bit about provisional ballots, to give you a little bit about that, understand provisional voting, federal laws, and I'm reading this straight from the, um, the voting website, um, allows you to cast a provisional ballot in a federal election if your name does not appear on the voter registration record, if you do not have ID, or if your eligibility to vote is in question, or if your prior vote ballot is in error. Okay, those are the reasons why. Your state may provide other reasons for voting by provisional ballot, whether a provisional ballot counts depend on if the state, now get this y'all, if the state can verify your eligibility. Check with your state or local election office to learn how to tell if your provisional ballot was counted. So y'all, if you are down to a provisional ballot, if you know you made an error, you, your, your license are expired, whatever the case may be, still complete that. That should be the last resort. That should be the last resort because provisional ballots are the last, the very last to be counted once you have been vetted. So they're going to be the last to be counted once you have been vetted. Know the rules. On yesterday's broadcast, I gave you all the phone numbers. I gave you all the phone numbers. Um, we can post those on the end of this thread as well. If you have any questions, y'all call that number. I gave you English, Spanish, and Arabic. Call that number to ask any questions you have. You will have to more than likely step outside to make that phone call, but make that phone call so that you have an understanding. Again, do not, at this point, do not mail in your ballot. Do not do it. Complete it. 
take it to an official drop box or take it to the board of elections, period. Y'all, that's where we are. That's where we are. The judge keeps making orders, but remember the blue mailboxes have not returned to the streets, nor have the sorting machines returned back to the post office. So y'all, we have to take this in our own matters in our own hand and make sure we're doing it. Monday, we talked about vote tripling. Again, as you vote or you know people to vote, get them to text three or four more people so that they can vote as well. Tuesday, we talked about transportation. I still have, if you are in central Ohio, I still have Lyft um, coupon codes to get you to um, uh, the Board of Election and to get you back on Sunday, which is sold to the polls in Columbus, Ohio. That's for Morse Road. Just inbox me if you need to know that. Um, good, Kim Kills. That's great. That's great. Um, yesterday, yesterday I talked about, what did I talk about yesterday, y'all? I'm getting tired. Can y'all tell? Yesterday, I don't know anymore what I talked about yesterday. Yesterday, I talked about um, voting rights. So I gave you the list of voting rights. Um, and today, the voter ID. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about voting as one who is um, considered to be disabled. All right, y'all just wanted to have some fun to break it up today. So I'm going to give you the top 20 candies that is uh, that we uh, that I read in Pure Wow. So number 20 is Sugar Babies. Y'all remember Sugar Babies? That was a, some good candy. That was yeah. I'm breaking this up a little bit. Sugar Babies, good candy. That's number 20. Number 19, Starburst. But only in number 19, Starburst, are they talking about the red, yellows, and the orange? I can agree with that. Number 18, Almond Joy. I have never liked that, but some of you may like it. But number 18, the candy is Almond Joy. Number 17, Sour Bright Crawlers. Never had those, but that's number 17. Number 16, Skittles. Love me some Skittles. Number 15, Airheads. Number 14, Nerds. Number 13, M&Ms. Yeah, whatever. And they were talking about the plain ones. I like them with the peanuts. Um, you said boo, orange starburst. Okay, number 12, milk duds. Y'all, milk duds. I didn't even know those still exist. Milk duds. I used to love me some milk duds also. Number 11, Twizzlers. That should have been like number one, but they have number 11 as Twizzlers. Number 10, Kit Kat. Who knew? Number nine. Now, I didn't know there were so many different Reese's products. Didn't know that. But number nine is Reese's Fast Break. Never had that, but it's Reese's Fast Break. Number eight, Hershey's Cookies and Creams. Hershey's Cookies and Creams. Number seven, which I think this is where you were going, Mike, too. Number seven, the Pink Starburst. The Pink Starburst. Those are the bomb.com. The pink ones. I will get Starburst and only pull out the pink ones. The pink ones, they need to do a bag all by themselves. The Pink Starburst. Number six, Candy Corn. Number six, candy corn. Number five, another fave of mine, Butterfinger. You said fast break is nasty. All right, Mike Nicholson. Uh, number five, Butterfingers. Love me some Butterfingers. Number four, pa Sour Patch Kids. I never had those. So they have number four, Sour Patch Kids. Good morning to my sister, Patricia. Number three, Reese's Take Five. What is that? So Reese's Take Five is number three. Number two, Twix. They have number two tw Twix rated as number two with candy. And I'm only giving y'all the top 20. They have top 45. I only want to give the top 20. Y'all, guess what the number one candy is? Candy. Can <laughs> you said, who came up with this list? Mike, I said it was Pure Wow. Pure Wow. PureWow.com. That's a great site for all kinds of information. Food, all, uh, travel, all kinds of information. Style election, finance, everything. You said your daughter's is obsessed with Take 5. Y'all, guess what number one is? Guess what number one is? Number one, number one candy, y'all. Number one candy is Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. What? I like you, Mike. Who came up with this list? It's Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Uh, pretzels, caramels, hugged with peanut butter. Uh, Sn Snickers is not on this list, Adrian. Snickers is not on this list. I thought that was kind of strange as well. Snickers is not on here. On the top, under the top 45, I think Lemonheads were on there. The Boston Baked Bings were on there. 
um there were a couple of now and laters y'all y'all remember now and laters now and laters were on there now, now and laters will break your teeth but now and laters was on there too in the top 45 so y'all this was just something fun to break up all the election stuff we have been talking about just to give y'all you know we're going into whether it's uh trunk and treats i think is a name i'm hearing now um people walking them up finding something else to do with the coronavirus of how to do something to engage with the with the children so i just wanted to break that up today all right y'all let's see hershey's and almonds would be number one see mm -hmm. yep reese cuts was number one all right y'all for the win for the win poll watchers those who are at the polls watching um it's a suburb list you got that right mike uh, poll watches for the win because you know i don't know if you've been um early voting or whatever you normally see two people walking around together is someone from the democratic party and someone from the republican party who has registered that way and they're just checking to make sure that there's no funny business as the poll workers are doing what they're doing as the people are doing what they're doing their job is pretty heavy so they get the win today they really do get the win today um and then next up um the inspirational message before i get to that message let me just share with you again tomorrow we're going to talk about voters um who may have a disability now you may not have that um, but please, 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 if you know anyone that will fit this category, it's going to take about 15 minutes for me to work through that tomorrow. But it's a subject that you don't really hear much about when it comes to voting. And there's a lot of information out there about do's and don'ts um, with people with disabilities and how you can help and also how you can request the Braille card because every vo uh, voting location they're not stacked with the braille cards which i think is crazy because you never know who's going to come up and need that type of assistance so i'm going to be talking about that tomorrow i'm getting a lot of questions about what will we do after november the third will news and motion be over no it will not be over it will not be over what we will do is continue the fight we now, I told you how many people haven't even registered to vote. It's too late now, but our work doesn't end beyond November the 3rd. We're going to talk about uh, uh, politics and, and news headlines, fun things as well. We'll be able to expand the news headlines. I, I, in, I was being intentional about doing what I was doing during these last few months of this um, this uh, general election cycle, this uh, le election season, if you will. We're going to talk about running for office. We're going to talk headlines. We're going to talk about uh, traveling. We're going to talk about retirement. We're going to talk about finances. We're going to talk about everything, every section of the news. I don't know if I'm going to break it up per day or what that's going to look like but no we're not going to quit and we will eventually move to yep the news still will be in motion we're going to eventually finally move to the news in motion facebook page we just knew it wasn't best to move it right now because everyone's coming here so we want to be mindful of that we didn't want to mess up people so we will wait and move that later we are going to reach out to mike nicholson yes we are we need to get our t-shirts we need to get our our merch going because people are asking for it um the other thing we're going to do the podcast will finally come out um next friday the first podcast i'll give you the information for that we have like about four or five um um episodes are already ready to go the first episode that will come out is called too much shade i interviewed three amazing women and the next one because of the feedback of just the people who were editing it will be shade 2.0 um, that will come out and then we'll be talking about self-care and so forth. So that's what we're doing with News in Motion. So we're going to continue that. So y'all, the inspirational message, the inspirational message today is we shall live and not die. We shall live and not die is the inspirational message today. Um, in a conversation I had on yesterday, which brought me to this message today, this woman made this statement over and over and over and over again. She kept saying, um, I will not die. I will not live if this man is in office for four more years. And she does have a, a, a health condition. And I kept saying to her, no, you will live and not die 
you will live and not die. And I was listening to her as she was sharing her, her anxiety, her frustration, her fears. And she was saying, but if my health care is gone, I'm going to die. If my health care is gone, my medicine will increase to $500 a pill. And she had, she had really, um, um, she had valid reasons for how she was feeling, but I kept reminding her that um, she is greater, she is bigger because she is a child of the Most High God, that she is greater, she is bigger, and she will live and not die regardless of who's in office. And I think for all of us, we have to understand, yes, that's where we live. We live in America. We do have a president. We do have a vice president. We do have three uh, branches of government. But at the same time, we know a man that sits high and looks low. We know a man who is ever present in our lives. And that is what we're going to tap into. Fear is not going to beat us up. Fear is not going to consume us. Fear is not going to stifle us. Fear is not going to paralyze us. You know, we got to keep going. We got to keep going. And, and one thing that I know, one thing that I know as an African-American female, as a black female, as a female age, black female age 55, every day we wake up with a fight. And every night we, we go to bed winning the fight. And how do we win? Because we survived another day. We already know what this feels like. We already know what this looks like. And we're going to keep going. So y'all, I speak that to you this morning. I know it's news in motion, but I'm going to still speak it to you this morning. We shall live and not die, regardless of what it looks like, regardless of, of the financial situation, our job situation, our food situation, regardless of any of that. We shall live and not die. And that's where we bring together community. That's where we bring together community. So, yep, you're right, Beverly. We know whose we are. We know that. We know that. And I have to be honest, when I was looking at all the information and I started, because I was just seeing when I was up on um, at the Board of Election the other day, and I was like, what are we doing? Yes, we have the drive-through where you can drop off your ballot if you are disabled um, or or elderly or you know just don't want to get out your car for whatever reason. But then I saw people in line pushing people in wheelchairs. I saw someone with their um, with their um, and I don't know. Forgive me. I don't know the name of it. But you knew that they they had a visual impairment because of the walking stick that they had. And I started thinking what. Well, I haven't seen any any information or, or anybody talking about voters that that are disabled in any way, um, whatever their their um, their disability. And so I started researching, and I like found tons of information. And so it's I believe okay, it's time for me to share this. So that's what we'll do on tomorrow. That's what we'll do on tomorrow. But hey, I need a favor from you. Share this video. Share the video from yesterday. Share the video from Monday. Share the videos. If you haven't joined the YouTube, just sign up, subscribe for the YouTube because more people that subscribe it is found easier so other people may be looking for information and they can find it. Also, I'm going to put in the shopping link down there. You know, everybody can shop at Target, right? I'm going to put that in there. And then some of you have asked for the Cash App because I have not given it in a while. And the Cash App is the dollar sign M-I-M today. And that's M as a Mary, I, M as a Mary, today, T-O-D-A-Y. M-I-M stands for Ministry in Motion, which News in Motion falls up under Ministry in Motion. All right, y'all. I am Gail Dudley. Today is Thursday, October the 29th. Make it a great day tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Come with your mimosas. It will be Mimosa Friday on Friday. And remember, it can just be a glass of orange juice, a glass of peach juice, a glass of water, whatever you want to do. Just come and let's toast together. All right, y'all, we're in the final stretch. It's five days. More than 75 million people have already cast their ballot. I will see you in the morning. Peace out.